Hi, this is Matt Ellington and this is a short video to demonstrate the capabilities of Power Pivot in Microsoft Excel. So for this demonstration what I'm going to do is use the uh, Microsoft AdventureWorks database which I have uh, on my computer and access database. So here is the AdventureWorks database and it's just a sample that's available um, on the internet and it's got some sales data and customer information etc. So I'm going to go straight into uh, Excel. I'm using Excel 2013 Power Pivot um, and click on Manage and first of all I'll in import some data into, uh, into the data model. So I'm going to select from a database, Access and I'll navigate to my Access database and it asks me to select from the list of tables that I want to import. So I need a I need a calendar table, which I prepared myself. I need some information about product, and also some information about product categories. Let's call that one product. Um, I'll also bring in some customer information and I need some sales so I'm going to bring in the sales header and sales detail so I'm going to call this one header sales and I'm going to call this table just simply sales so I've got customer product product category sales and calendar. I can preview and filter those and there are some fields that I don't need so I'll just remove those and click finish. And then Power Pivot just goes ahead and imports that data into Excel. Okay, so I'll now switch to the diagram view and you'll be able to see how uh, the data is related and in fact um, Power Pivot has made an attempt to join these data products up for me. So the sales table is the data table, it's got all the information and then the header information is effectively the, the invoice header detail. And they get sold to some customers. So I'm going to join that up to the customer. And these are the individual products, and those products belong to a product category. So I'm going to join those. And the sales occurred on a particular date. I'm going to take the order date as being the uh, the date which is in the header file and join that up to the date and so that's how you build a data model and um, the last thing I'll do is I'll go to uh, the calendar and I'm just going to tell Power Pivot that I want to sort the days of week based on this week number column and also to sort the month name based on the month number of year column and the last thing I'll do is I'm going to mark this as the date table Okay, so now I can go ahead and create a pivot table. And this is very similar to uh, regular pivot tables. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, um, a, a measure here. So I'm going to create a new calculated field, put it in the sales table, and total sales value. line 
total for each product. It's currency. Check the formulas, okay. And there's a total for our sales um, in their database. And if I come up to the calendar and bring down the calendar year, we can automatically get a, a total for every year. So now what I'd like to do is uh, have a look at uh, last year's sales. So I'll create a new calculated field, put it in the sales table, total sales last year, and for this I'm going to use the calculate total sales, and I'm going to use a function called same period last year dates. And you can see that for the year 2002, the sales for last year is equal to 2001, and so on. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll create a new calculated field, and I want to get the percentage change. The percentage change versus uh, last year. last year and this time it's going to be a percentage uh, one decimal place and I'm going to remove the last year sales and we end up with the table like this and in fact I can bring down the the month name and get a, uh, a monthly total and once again see the change versus prior year so the next thing I'm going to do is I'll just rearrange this table and I'll put the um, look in year 2001 and I'm going to bring down some customer information so I might bring in the full name of the customer and of course in 2001 we didn't have any sales in the prior year so I'll change to 2002 and I can sort this by largest to smallest to see who's my largest customer and in fact I can do some conditional formatting to, uh, to make it easy to get a visual representation of, of how important each one of these customers is to us. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the format of this pivot table and I'm going to bring uh, years into the columns and from there you can see the performance year on year growth for each of our customers. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some products. In fact, I'm going to bring in uh, some product categories. I'm going to bring in the product category name and I'm going to remove the customer names. And you can see that we've got some percentage growth in by product category uh, year on year. And in fact, I can bring in the subcategory name For the last example, what I'm going to do is um, bring in the actual product names. So here's the product name here, and I'm going to insert a slicer. And so this is what we typically do to make a, a tool that um, users and, um, and business people can use to access the data. So I'm going to uh, bring in here some the product category name and the subcategory name as slices and what I'll do is I'll put some space at the top of this table modify this slicer Categories there, subcategories there, and the categories up here. This, and then I can use the 
the slices to drill in and have a look at the performance of individual SKUs by clicking on the slicer doing a multi-select. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a, um, a good first look at Power Pivot and how quickly and easily you can build meaningful reporting tools using existing data.